again, everyone. This is Dr. Sean Allen with the Gate Guys, G-A-I-T-G-U-I-S. We are on Facebook, thegateguys.com. We're also on Twitter, and you can meet us at our website. Once again, thegateguys, G-A-I-T-G-U-I-S, thegateguys.com. Today we're going to do a little bit of a toe talk. I thought I would um, talk about a few things that uh, came up in the clinic this week with some of our runners and some of our patients. Uh, we understand, we find out quite frequently that when our athletes and our runners and our pa patients understand uh, the function of their foot, they understand why they're doing their homework, they understand when things are going wrong, and they start to get a better appreciation for when things are starting to go right. So let's uh, take a little break here for a minute, and uh, we'll uh, pan the camera down, and we'll have a look at my foot, we'll have a look at this model foot, and a couple little principles that will help you understand how your foot works. So let's uh, have a look at my foot for just a minute. Uh, you'll notice that uh, I've got some uh, dots on the tips of my toes. You'll understand why those are there in just a moment. And um, you'll notice that uh, somewhere along the line I broke my little toe when I was a kid and so we don't have as good a function of it. It does tend to elevate a little bit there you can see but I still have pretty good function of it. So, so um, as I said the tips on the toes that'll, that'll come around in just a minute you'll understand why. So. Let's talk about a few muscles first. First muscle I'd like to talk about is the tib posterior. Tibialis posterior comes off the back of the uh, tibialis, obviously, posterior aspect of it. Comes down behind the medial malleolus and dives down and attaches into some of the medial structures of the foot. Attaches into the navicular. We'll show you on here in just a minute. The navicular. Uh, the uh, medial cuneiforms, several of them, the second, third, and fourth metatarsal heads, and even off of the cuboid. So it basically comes down, swoops down behind medial malleolus, attaches into navicular uh, cuneiforms in here, first metatarsals, it kind of swoops down. So you can see when this muscle contracts, it's going to help to lift the arch, and it's also going to uh, invert the rear foot. So you're going to get this type of an action. It's going to raise up. It's going to help you with plantar flexion of the foot. So it's going to assist the gastroc, the soleus, some of the uh, flexors. Um, and it's also going to invert the foot. So you're going to see the calcaneus invert. So as you come up, you're going to see the calcaneus invert a little bit. Okay? That is your tib posterior. It is innervated by the uh, tibial nerve and uh, attaches to the medial structure of the foot. There's two other muscles I want to talk about, and there's a reason why. There is the flexor hallucis brevis. Hallucis is another name for the big toe, and the big toe has two joints to it, or two, two bones to it, the proximal phalanx and the distal phalanx. There's your distal, and there's your proximal, and here's the first MPJ joint, first metatarsal phalangeal joint. This is really important. And you also hear me mention sesamoids. That's those two bones that are floating beneath the base of the first metatarsal. So let's go ahead and draw the joint line in here for just a minute. There's the joint line in red. Okay. And that means right here is the base of the first metatarsal, or first fit phalange right here. So base of the first phalange here, medial and lateral. And we've got a muscle, the flexor uh, hallucis brevis, that will attach into those two points. Now, right here and right here are two bones. Those are your sesamoids. Okay? And those are these two little bones right here. They are uh, created, are there for mechanical leverage. Uh, the patella, or the kneecap, is a sesamoid. We know that the quadricep passes through that sesamoid to create mechanical advantage. And so these are there to create mechanical advantage as well. And we'll talk about that mechanical advantage in just a minute. So flexor brevis, medial head, comes down. It invests itself in that tendon, just like the quad in the, uh, invests the patella. It's going to come down. It's going to attach into the me, uh, medial aspect of the cuboid and the third um, cuneiform. So cuboid, cuneiform, this is basic area right here. You can see it's very close to the tip posterior comes down nicely through here. Okay, so that's the medial head. And the medial head actually does blend in with some of the tendon of the tib posterior. So there's some shared function, hence why we're talking about it today. 
the lateral head comes down through the lateral sesamoid, comes down, attaches into the same area. Okay. Those are pretty important. They, like I said, they create some mechanical leverage to help this joint gain um, purchase on the ground. And then that muscle will flex. So we've got two flexors to the long toe. We've got a short flexor, which is that one, the brevis that we're talking about. And then we've got the long flexor. Okay, We're just talking about the hallucis brevis today, flexor hallucis brevis. So there's extension at that joint, flexor hallucis brevis will flex us to there and then longus will flex us from there, okay? Let's talk about that mechanical leverage for just a minute here. Okay, so, these sesamoids underneath that base of that first metatarsal. So if this here, if you were looking at one of my sesamoids, and this is your first metatarsal, okay? So I'm gonna show you a mirror image of what I'm trying to do here. Here's your first metatarsal. There's your two sesamoids on the ground, and there's your hallux, okay? So if I were to spin that foot around and do this, you would see this relationship right here. First metatarsal, sesamoid, you're going to see this type of activity. Okay, so when the foot starts to come into plantar flexion, when the heel is coming up and your plantar flexing that first met, the sesamoid kind of rolls up underneath the first metatarsal head. What that does is it creates some mechanical leverage at this joint. It helps us to shift that axis along that joint. It's an eccentric axis. It's one of the few joints in the body that has an eccentric axis. When you slide those metatar or the sesamoids underneath that metatarsal head, you allow yourself to get to 45 to 60 degrees of extension at that joint. This is extension open chain when the toe is on the ground and you're extend extending through it. There's closed chain. You need about 45 to 60 degrees of extension at that joint in order to get proper toe off, okay? If you cannot contract the flexor hallucis brevis appropriately with some of the other muscles around this joint, you can't slide those sesamoids up underneath that metatarsal head to create enough shift in the joint and you'll get an early lock, which is called perf toe, okay? So it's more than just looking at the flexor hallucis brevis. There's some extensors that have to work. It's really a team effort, but this is something that uh, we find very interesting. We'll talk about it a little more in detail. The abductor hallucis comes off of the medial calcaneal tubercle, kind of up on the medial side, and it's going to come down and it's going to blend into, guess what, the medial head of the flexor hallucis brevis. So this muscle is going to create abduction. The midline of the foot is the second toe. Abduction would be a pulling away from the midline. So this muscle will abduct that toe. Interestingly, the abductor hallucis blends in with the flexor hallucis, and they both have a common nerve innervation, the medial plantar nerve. So to review, we've got a tib posterior coming down, inserting into the medial plantar aspect of the foot, and blending in with the medial flexor of the big toe. We've got the flexors coming off the plantar medial aspect of the foot, blending into the base of the first metatarsal, to create flexion, and we've got the abductor attaching into um, the medial head of the flexor hallucis brevis, both sharing the same nerve, same function, and that will create abduction. So now, why is this important? Well, you can see that all of these are going to help us shorten the distance here, okay? So if I had a foot in which the arch was dropping, okay, it would make sense then I'm probably having some di degree of difficulty stabilizing this medial arch as opposed to being able to shorten the distance in that arch there. Okay, so when this is anchored and this is anchored, I can get that arch up nice and high. I can then appropriately use my toes and move them independently without moving the arch, whereas a lot of people will get toes up, toes down, but when they do that, the arch drops with it. And you can see this arch height is dropping a little bit. But if I can move them independently, I should be able to hold the arch up, move the toes down, and the, and the marker doesn't even move, okay? So these muscles help with controlling pronation. Some pronation is normal for um, uh, shock absorption. It allows the foot to become slightly mobile, 
uh, to adapt over uneven terrain, but too much is a problem too. So, let's look at this from straight on for just a minute so you can appreciate something. Let's look at the dots now. I'm going to place this ruler right along the medial aspect of my foot there so you can see it's right along the edge of the metatarsal there. Okay. So when my toes come up and come down, they, all t they can come down all together and this is improper function because really what you want to see is as the toes are coming down you want to see the toes splay apart and you want to see that abductor halysis which pulls off the midline getting that toe, that's why I've got the ruler here, into abduction. So a lot of people what happens is the toes come down, the arch starts to come down and you can't get into those other structures. You can see the space between here and here. Whereas if I can get the arch up, I can get into the correct muscles, I can create abduction of that first toe, the toes spread apart, reaching for real estate, grab onto the ground, and then I can toe off appropriately. As opposed to clients who are here, which also tend to be your flexors, these are the clients that have calluses on the tips of the toes, they have either flexible or semi-rigid hammer toes, and you can see the distance that occurs there. And this is why you start to create a bunion, because some of the weakness in this area. Now certainly it's more complicated than that, but for today we wanted to show you normal function of the medial aspect of the foot, showing you abduction, trying to get that first toe down into a neutral position along the shaft of the first metatarsal in the hallux, as opposed to letting them come down lazily, coming down at an angle, which is poor function. Those clients will get into more of a grip response and get themselves into some functional trouble with some intrinsic muscle weakness in the bottom of the foot. So wouldn't you rather put something underneath um, the foot in terms of muscle function lifting up in the arch as opposed to putting an orthotic in there artificially and passively lifting the foot? So what we're trying to say is strengthen the intrinsic muscles of the foot, get into better function, independently learn how to move your toes as opposed to letting them drop and then having to put some type of device underneath the foot, whether it's an orthotic, a motion control shoe, or God forbid both. So um, this was Toe Talk with the, uh, the gate guys today. And we remind you to work on trying to get your foot to a nice tripod, heel, lateral forefoot, medial forefoot. And when you do, you get into a nice tripod position. And when you don't, you collapse. So, again, this is Dr. Sean Allen, and we are with the Gate Guys. Thanks. We'll see you guys again.